A little wife. We also have some on the back. He does. He can escape. Um, I'm very happy to welcome Cuba um, to give the visitor a talk on an Apple Office, on a brief sensor that he is working on at Subaru. Uh, he was a postdoc with this Kipsio team at Subaru, and I'm going to move to Hasi. So, back to South Korea, a um, couple of months ago, I got a comment so congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's here to talk about the nonlinear curvature mapping sensor that he's developing for Subaru. So I'll give you the floor. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Garima, for introducing me. So as Garima told uh, to you guys, so I just got the position in Korea. So I just moved back to Korea. So, um, but I'm happy to back here. So it's nice, warm, and clean sky no? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the korea is winter so it's freezing now so i'm happy to back <laughs> so i'm gyeonan so i'm from kasi right now so as uh uh Karima introduced i was a postdoc in skexio team at subaru so today i'm gonna talk about the uh, uh, commissioning the nonlinear curvature sensor at the subaru for the AO3, new ao3k system so there are many applications, but uh, because I've just moved moved to Korea, so I have many applications currently. <laughs> so these are the contexts for the today's talk. So let's get started. The first section is just introduction. So some of you may already know we started upgrading the AO uh, our facility AO system AO one eighty eight to AO three K system. The main upgrades are replacing the DM or 188 DM to 3K DM uh, and adding a new infrared pyramid reference sensor and new visual curvature reference sensor. So I'm mainly working on this uh, new visual curvature reference sensor. Julian, who's here, Julian is working on, mainly working on the new infrared pyramid reference sensor. So you can ask him about that if you're interested in. Uh, so the current visible reference sensor can only measure 188 MOS because it uh, it uses 188 APD arrays and lenslet arrays. So that means even if we can ha we have the 3K DM, we cannot use full cap capability of the DM because the reference sensor can only measure 180 MOS. So they, this is the main motivation for this project. So to overcome this limitation, we uh, deploy a QCMOS camera instead of using ATV, APD arrays. So eventually then we can measure over 16,000 MOS uh, for the reference sensing. Uh, but we are not replacing the just camera because it's research projects. We are new, uh, we are, we are deploying new concept for the uh, better AO performance. So the before showing the new concept, I will explain the fundamental principle of the curvature reference sensor a little bit. Uh, for some who some people who may not be familiar with the curvature reference sensor. So as you can see in here, um, I'm showing the uh, reference sensor image here uh, as a function of the depot cost uh, distance. So when you have the turbulence, uh, you can see all this blood uh, PP images depends on the depot cost distance. So using uh, two pair of those image, you can measure the coverage of the reference. Then you can uh, correct the reference error using that signal, reference sensor signal. So using this linear relationship <coughs> between the phase uh, and the uh, the coverture and the reference sensor signal, you can close the you can close the loop. I know it's not easy, but anyways, however, only using two in and out of focused images uh, cannot have a good sensitivity for both low order and high order aberration. So because um, the near pupil images is very sensitive to low uh, high order modes, but it's not sensitive to the low order modes. But uh, far pupil plane images are opposite. So if we want to, the, the conventional curvature reference sensor should, uh, I. The conventional reference sensor, curvature reference sensor is using only two pair of uh, images, so it should have uh, have to be tuned for only for low order or high order or between those two. 
So to overcome this limitation, we add uh, we proposed the dual stroke uh, linear curvature wavefront sensor mode sensor concept. So which use uh, two near pupil images and two far pupil images, then we can have uh, good sensitivity good sensitivity sensitivity for both low order and high order vibrations. Um, so we are using all sorry, it's a little bit delay. So we are using all these four pupil images. Uh, and the other concept of the nonlinear curvature reference is that we we deploy nonlinear reconstruction algorithm uh, while the translational trend traditional wavefront sensor for AO is just I uh, use the linear relationship between wavefront sensor signal and the uh, phase error but uh, we are deploying the nonlinear reconstruction method so we can have high dynamic range and more sensitivity. So that's why we call this reference sensor non a nonlinear web uh, nonlinear curvature reference sensor. So for the nonlinear reconstruction method, uh, we deploy the phase diversity algorithm, which is just iterative free transform algorithm, and we also uh, deploy the machine learning you know, neural net. Uh, I will talk about a little bit more detail later. So so the ultimate goal is to combine the dual stroke. Uh, nonlinear uh, the dual stroke linear curvature wave sensor and nonlinear algorithm to have a uh, better AO performance. So as you can see on the right figure, the yellow line here is the current A188 performance, and uh, the other colored lines uh, are showing the nonlinear curvature wave sensor's performance. So we can significantly improve the AO performance using the nonlinear curvature wave sensor and AO3K system. So this is the main motivation. So the next section is uh, the optical and optomechanical design. So I will show you how I designed the uh, reference sensor. So before the designing the reference sensor, I cannot start from the scratch. So I need to set uh, the, some parameters. Uh, so first of all, I set the uh, number of pixel across the pupil. For the fast AO loop, uh, I set the we set the 120 pixel across the pupil because we can operate the camera up to two kilohertz. So we can then we can have the maximum uh, AO speed as uh, two kilohertz. And it also having two pixels per actuator because the DM has 64 by 64 actuators across, across the pupil. And other, other parameters are defocus distance and field of view, but I'm not gonna make, uh, go over the, all the details about the focus distance. If you're interested in this, then you can see the Olivia's paper. <laughs> and the field of view was just, uh, is identical to current uh, reference sensor is four arcsecond. So using these parameters, uh, after setting these parameters, the first question is then how I can make the defocused pupil images like 100 kilometer or even 1700 kilometer. But thanks to the Fresnel equation, um, the actual uh, propagation distance for a reference sensor is not that large because the beam size of the reference sensor is only four millimeter co compared to the eight meter telescope aperture. So I only need a few hundred millimeter to have a few thousand kilometer uh, propagation distance. But still fuzzy, how can I dis uh, design this reference sensor? So. And the second question was, how can I make, uh, get the full difficult image at the same time, simultaneously, in using one camera? So I was inspired by the trombone. So it's musical instrument. <clears throat> so I, as you can see in here, um, oh, yeah, I can use this. Oh, no. OK, anyways. So using the two beam splitter or, or dichroic filters, uh, you can have four different uh, optical pass lengths here, uh, optical pass A, B, C, D. Then you can have four different images uh, at the same time as uh, at the same time by tilting mirrors here somewhere. So this is the actual uh, auto mechanical design of the nonlinear curvature reference sensor. So you can see the trombone shape, and I I also added two rotation stages rotation stages to have multiple modes uh one for uh so such as 
NGS mode, LGS mode, uh, and focal plane weapon sensing mode. So using the two dichroic filters, uh, we can have natural guided star mode, NGS mode. So you can have four different images with four different wavelengths. Um, this is for the nonlinear reconstruction reconstruction algorithm, but just um, for the simple idea, just, I'm just using the beam splitter to split night. Uh, you don't need to worry about the wave, wavelengths. Anyways, and for the LGS mode, it's a little tricky, but I'm using the polarizing beam splitter, two polarizing beam splitter and ha one half wave plate. So then I can have only two optical paths. So then I can, uh, we can see only two near pupil images. Actually, by rotating the half wave plate, you can see, you can change this to two far pupil images. But uh, for the LGS mode, we don't use far pupil plane images. Um, anyways, the, after, the, after this design process, uh, we did some numerical simulations to evaluate the uh, full capability of the nonlinear curvature web sensor. So the purpose of the numerical simulation uh, is that so first, we look for the opti optimal propagation distance for the curvature reference sensing. And uh, once we find the optimal propagation distance, then we, we validate the performance of the AO3K system with the nonlinear curvature reference sensor under various uh, conditions, like different seeing and different magnitude of the star and, and so on. And uh, we also verified the expected uh, AO, AO performance with the laser guide star mode is single conjugated uh, laser guide star mode anyways. And the right table shows the parameters, just parameters that I used uh, for the numerical simulations. So in the numerical simulation, I, I didn't uh, simulate the nonlinear reconstruction algorithm. I just used the classical linear curvature algorithm uh, for your information. So to, to find the, the, first of all, to find the optimal propagation distance, uh, I, uh, we conducted the simulations of, by scanning the delta Z, the propagation distance. So, sorry. Uh, so first we scan the uh, delta Z1 from 10 kilometer to 1000 kilometer. So um, as you can see on the orange regime, the residual RMS is unstable because if the pupil plane is too closer to the pupil, then you don't have uh, much sensitivity for the low or the mode. So that's why the AO performance is not stable. But uh, in contrast, when you have when you look at the blue region here, when you, if you are too far from the pupil, then you lost the sensitivity to the for the high order mode, so uh, you lose the AO performance. So uh, our uh, optimal goal, uh, optimal solution was that uh, by changing the propagation distance, be able to uh, being able to change the propagation distance between this regime, we can uh, uh, we can adjust the propagation distance depends on the weather or target. So after we setting the uh, delta Z1, the propagation distance, we scan also delta Z2 for the far pupil plane images. So as you can see here, most of case is very stable. AO system, AO performance is very stable. But when you have very large or large uh, propagation distance, you the AO, system, AO performance is not stable because the reference sensor signal get, signals get Nonlinear. So, uh, and also, if you have very long propagation distance, then you you would need to have large uh, reference sensor size. So, uh, considering the compactness of the system and the su 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 sufficient uh, su sensitivity for the low order, we set that the uh, focus distance as 17 kilometer somewhere there um, and after found after we found the optimal propagation distance uh, we 
compared AO3K, uh, the performance of the AO3K system and AO180 system uh, as a function of the magnitude of the star. So in this left figure, the blue curve is showing AO180 performance and the orange dotted line and green is hard to see, but green dashed lines and red curve are AO3K uh, performance. So most of case with the bright star AOK3K can uh, have way better performance than AO180. But when we look at the faint target, the performance gain is not that much because we have, <clears throat> because the AO180 has the APD, the APD doesn't have without noise. It's only, it only has the uh, photo noise. So it's very sensitive to, to for, uh, for the faint target. So, so we, uh, so for the faint target, we make, uh, we make the low sampling mode, which has only 32 by 32 pixels across the pupil and, uh, the AO loop speed, uh, 300 Hertz. So by sacri sacrificing the loop speed and high order modes, we can have uh, better sensitivity, better, uh, we can reduce the re uh, redound noise for the detector. So that's what, uh, but, uh, so then we can have better SNR on the SLM, I, uh, better SNR on the reference sensor, then we can have better uh, AO performance with the faint target. So that's why we added, added the low sampling mode. So uh, uh, eventually uh, we would expect that we can have this orangey thick curve for the AO, AO3K performance eventually by optimizing the loop speed and uh, low sampling mode. So we also validate AO3K performance with different, uh, uh, with the nonlinear curvature reference sensor and different conditions. So there are too many lines, so many lines, but uh, the different color means different seeing conditions and Parted lines uh, are only using two PP planes and and dashed line is over four PP planes. So this uh, figure show, is showing uh, the reference sensor image at the like about 12 magnitude star. So as you can see here, when, when we use only two PP plane, we can have better sense SNR, but because we are splitting, splitting uh, into four different pupil planes, so you can have your with the four plane, four planes, you have worse SMRs. That's why what I want to show you here. So that's why uh, when you go after this magnitude, uh, only two pupil plane has better uh, AO performance than four pupil planes because you you have more photons. Uh, and the last result is the. AO performance with the LGS to simulate the laser gas star mode. Uh, we change we change the uh, brightness of the laser gas star and full with the half maximum of the laser gas star depends on the elevation. So so you can see when we have high elevation, uh, we have we can have better AO performance, but we have low elevation then the AO performance is getting worse. And for the comparison, uh, to compare with the theoretical limitation, this orange line, uh, we I compared these two lines. So we confirm that the AO performance looks reasonable with the LGS. And from now on, uh, I will show you the lab demonstration. So this is the actual setup. Uh, so the currently there is no space for the new reference sensor inside the A180. It's very crowded. So the only solution was building the new reference sensor on top of the current reference sensor. So we built the second floor. So that's why I design why I designed this uh, see these posts and the plate. And now the right figure is uh, the picture in the lab. Um, so. Here's a laser and collimation lens, and I'm using the SLM uh, 
instead of DM. This was the last summer at back then that uh, we didn't have the DM, but now we have the new DM. So we can test the reference sensor with the new DM. That's why I came here. But anyways, I will uh, tell you more detail later. So using the SLM, I was, uh, I'm simulating the turbulence and um, also injecting the correction from correction command from the reference sensor at the same time. So, um, and I, I also, uh, this, D, this SLM has 512, 512 actuators, but I'm only using the 320 pixels uh, to match the actual beam size of the reference sensor. And to simulate the 64 by 64 DM, I'm using five by five binning. So I'm reducing the actuators. Uh, oh, sorry. So this is the actual reference sensor image. So you can see two near pupil images and two far pupil plane images. So I'm just using the circular aperture. There's no center of circulation or spider. So this is the software setup. So top left is uh, the reference sensor roll image and the middle uh, top middle one is the total SLM command, which is showing, which is showing the um, residual reference error. And the right top right one is the PSF monitoring camera to monitor the AO performance. And the top left is, uh, bottom left is the terminal to run the script for the testing. And this is the uh, SLM display. We generate generated the 12 virtual SLM channel so we can control the SLM in uh, separately by injecting different command to different channels. So you can imagine we have 12 virtual SLMs. So for example, I'm injecting the turbulence on the TM channel, uh, SLM channel four, and I'm injecting the correction command from the reference sensor on the channel five. So this is the total uh, total command from the SLM. And so for the linear reconstructor, we use just linear curvature algorithm. So this is the pro uh, procedure for the calibration. So uh, take the response metrics using the SLM and the reference sensor. And uh, in this procedure, we actually confirm that the near pupil images are very sensitive to, to the high order modes, and but not the uh, but not the low order modes. And we also confirm that the far pupil images is very sensitive to, to the low order modes. So this is the actual lab data. After calibrating, after the uh, the calibration, we con we computed the control matrix using the uh, SVD. And the select the number of control modes using uh by based on the eigenvalues. So after the response taking the response metrics, we invert the metrics and then uh we make we build the control metrics using the response metrics, inversion of the response metrics. So for the, and for the nonlinear algorithm, so uh the the first nonlinear algorithm is the uh George Fox Texton algorithm. It's just iterative Fourier transform algorithm. If you have um, multiple uh, defocused pupil image, then you can just iterate the Fourier transform. Then you can find the solution. Like here, you can retrieve the phase. That's the uh, basic phenomena of this algorithm. And the second one is neural net. And so for the training, I took uh, I took reference sensor image with the with uh, input. So this is re uh, reinforced running in re reinforcement running. So I, I I gave I give the answer to the computer uh, the network and then the network will automatically train with the data. So this is the loss loss function. The loss function is just the root mean square error. Of, uh, between the input and our output phase. Uh, so I use the UNET, it's quite common for the image recognition, like recognition or uh, AO system. So now, uh, from now on, I will show you the result from the actual 
uh, test. So as you can see here, this I'm using the reference sensor is using only two near PPA image. So you can see in the in the residual error, you can see low the components here because two near PPA images are not sensitive to the low the mode. But when we use uh, when the reference sensor use all all four images, you cannot see any specific low order and high order uh, aberration on the residual error. So that means we can have better sensitivity for both low order and high order aberration by using four pupil images. So this is the comparison between two planes or four planes. So as you can see on the left, uh, for using the four pupil planes, you can have faster convergence and better your performance. And the right figure is the power spectral density of the residual reference error. So um, as you can see here, using only two near PP plane images, you can have better performance with the high spatial frequency. And uh, but when you use the four or four PP plane images, you can have better sensitive a uh, better correction on the low the frequency here. So eventually then you can have better AO performance. Um, so with the strong turbulence, uh, we combine two uh, linear reconstructor. So since the two near PP plane was, it's very sense, uh, very, uh, it has larger dynamic range and the four PP plane was is very sensitive to better sensitivity. So we used uh, two near PP planes at the beginning of the AO loop. And once the uh, wavefront error gets smaller, then we use the four, all four PP planes. So I will show you the video. Is it working? No, sorry. Closer. Closer. So here, I, when I run the, um, oh wait, it stopped. Sorry. When I run the script, at, you cannot see really here, but the reference sensor is using only two near PP plane, and then now uh, to correct this high order aberration, the reference sensor is use, using all four PP plane images. Actually, these. Uh, reference error is not coming from the reference sensor, it's coming from the SLM because uh, I'm injecting strong turbulence by wrapping the phase on the SLM. So this is the phase wrapping error from the SLM. So you can see the phase jump here. So, but anyways, the by closing the loop, we can also compensate for this kind of phase jump as well. So finally, eventually the residual error is gets, getting smaller and smaller. So um, that's how we confirm that the linear reconstructor is working very well. And the next concept was that uh, to combine the nonlinear reconstructor and linear reconstructor. So as I told you, the nonlinear reconstructor has a uh, like unlimited dynamic range. So at the beginning of the very beginning of the AO loop, we use the nonlinear reconstructor, and then once uh, once the wavefront wavefront error is in the linear regime, then we switch it to the linear reconstructors. So I will show you the video again. So I'm putting the nonlinear uh, the correction from the nonlinear reconstructor on the channel six. So when I run the when I close the loop at the beginning. Uh, there is only there was only the correction from the nonlinear reconstructor, and then after that, the once the reference er error is in the linear regime, then I'm uh, correcting the the reference let's say correcting the reference error using the linear reconstructor. So that's why it's very stable and very fast. So you can, you I can show you again. So you could see uh, you can clearly see that. The convergence is very fast and more stable once get uh, in the linear regime. Uh, oh, sorry. This uh, when when I close the loop with the nonlinear constructor in this test, I was using the GS 
algorithm, and this is with the neural net. A neural net does have a uh, better convergence because the GS algorithm needs the iterate uh, iteration to converge, but no, uh, the neural net doesn't require the uh, uh, iteration. So when you look at the very beginning, just one step, you need one step to converge. So here, like after one step, you can almost correct most of the where front error that where front error get into the uh, linear regime. So we can use the linear reconstructors. So then we can keep the AO system very stable. Uh, so this is the comparison. When you look at the left figure, the linear reconstructor is blue curve, and the orange and green curves are uh, nonlinear reconstructor. So nonlinear reconstructors are very uh, has have better convergence and uh, be, uh, better convergence here. And even when you look at the green curve, the nonlinear reconstructor with the neural net is has better convergence, uh, faster convergence than on uh, GS algorithm. So, and the right figure is the um, the test results with the different uh, flux level. So I put the blue cur uh, the sky blue cur curve for the comparison for the AO one eighty eight performance. So, so we can see uh, uh, the significant uh, performance improvement improvement uh, with the bright target mostly, but uh, it's not working very well with the faint target. So that's why we we added the low sampling mode at the beginning. So th I think uh, that's it for the lab demonstration. So after the lab demonstration, we installed, we commissioned the nonlinear curvature reference sensor on the Subaru telescope. So this is the actual position of the nonlinear curvature reference sensor. And I put the actual human size for the comparison. So it's in on the NASMIS platform of the Subaru telescope. Uh, and it's inside the A188. The black box is current A188 system. So it's inside the current A188 system. So for the transportation in the lab, I uh, make the frame and enclosure to protect the optics. And then I also wrap uh, this with the bubble wrap for the safety and using the Subaru car, I could, uh, we could transport this setup safely uh, at, to, all the way to the summit. So yeah, this is the elevator inside the telescope. <laughs> so, and this is the first installation procedure. So first of all, I installed the post to make the support to install the support plate. So the support using this post and support plate, I could build, I could build the second floor here. And then I installed the pick off beam splitter to pick off the light from the current visual reference sensor. And then after that, it was very straight straightforward. The procedure was straightforward because I we finished all the integration of the core optics of the uh, nonlinear curvature sensor in the lab. So we just crane the whole setup and slide into the uh, into the A one eighty eight box. So and the installation was done. And after that, uh, so this, this, the middle one is craning video. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. I, I will just skip it. This time is ticking. So uh, after the installation, uh, I align the optics and you can see the raw reference sensor image with the DM flat map and uh, internal source. So it's uh, two near, you can see the two near pupil images at the center and two the other images for the far pupil images. So interestingly, you can see this electrode pattern on the DM from the reference sensor. <clears throat> so that means uh, the, these two near pupil plane has very sensitivity for the higher numbers. And also we check the focal plane image uh, to 
to check the alignment quality. So we don't see, we couldn't see any additional load vibration from the alignment. So we confirmed that alignment alignment was okay. Uh, after that, <laughs> I uh, we copied the software interface from the lab. Uh, so which is the same. Um, sorry, and then using the internal represent uh sure. internal source and the current DM the DM one and one hundred eighty eight. I uh we could close the loop. We could close the AO loop using the internal source, but unfortunately we had small telescope problems, so we couldn't go on sky. <laughs> so so now, but. However, uh, the exciting news is that we got the new DM here. Finally, it has been de delivered to Hilo uh, like last month. So the DM is on the testing with the Zygo interferometer. So uh, this is very exciting news. So um, the reason I came here is that to test the new DM and the nonlinear curvature where reference sensor at the same time in the lab. So yesterday I went to the summit and I brought my setup into the Hilo lab again. But anyway, so that we can uh, test the full AO3K performance in the lab and uh, before going to the own sky. Uh, I think we have engineering AO3K engineering night on May, end of May. Yeah, so we are working hard right now. So you can see, and you can see very, all electronics for 3 KDM is like almost more than two meter tall, higher than two meter. And finally, this is the last slide for today's talk. So we successfully demonstrate the nonlinear curvature reference in the lab and the half uh, with the half telescope time. <laughs> so and uh, also we will test a new DM with the reference sensor, so we can. Uh, test full AO3K performance in the lab. And then uh, hopefully we can go in sky soon. And for the few future projects, so we will improve the loop speed for the nonlinear algorithm using the GPUs and TensorRT uh, for the real time control. It's the Actually the nonlinear algorithm is not real time yet. So we need to improve the loop speed uh, for uh, the real time control. The, for the actual AO loop. Yeah, that's it for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. So I'm happy to take the questions or comments. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kiron, for this great talk. You, cover, you covered almost everything, like simulations, lab setup, submissioning planning. That's great. Yeah, I worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> Do we have any questions? I have been not speak up. Yeah. <laughs> do we have anyone on? Uh, why why do you only use two planes for LGS mode? Oh, that's a very good question. So, uh, for the LGS mode, you cannot measure like tip tilts or load. It's hard to measure the load modes using the LGS. So. Uh, as I told you, the FAPI planes only sensitivity for the um, low the most, so it's not useful. So you can, by using two near PP plane, we can more like con concentrate for mm -hmm. correcting the higher the most using the LGS one. And also, LGS is slightly, I know, I mean, it's extended, so when we look at the extended source, uh, the far PP plane with the extended source is too nonlinear. So we cannot clearly see the reference sensor signals. Yeah. So that's why we only use the near, near, near PP images. So what's the plan for the load on what's that case? We use the, the usual load or reference sensor? Yeah, thanks to the current setup, we, ha we do have load reference sensor, so we can uh, we can use that load of modes, or you can use your uh, near ground <laughs> web sensor for the load, for the correction. Yep. 
Do we have any questions from the online participants? Not in the group chat. No. Okay. I have a question. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so now that you're in this new role at CASI, yep. um, and you're working on this project that is centered around Subaru Telescope, do you have other projects planned in the future that will be on Gemini, or is it going to mostly be um, working out AO system stuff on Subaru for eventually applying to Gemini? <laughs> I mean, as you know, the CASI and Gemini have uh close collaboration many close collaborations so i'm already uh involved in the gem one of the gemini ao uh project uh, it's called geomos gemini infrared multi-object spectrograph so and i'm i'm hoping to uh inv get involved in more projects uh for the gemini so that then i can come to here more often <laughs> so but ultimately you think you'll do both for for the foreseeable career? yeah i think so I, i'm uh the my current company want me to do some close um some connecting point between the subaru and uh kasi so they want to have another collaboration with the subaru for the like developing the new instruments or something like that and also they want also they want me to use myself as the uh, connect connection point for the Hawaii, <laughs> so uh, I can work on uh, work with the Gemini folks as well. So cool. yeah, yeah. So when you're splitting the, the four pupil images onto the wavefront sensor, yes, is there an advantage to using a dichroic that oh. gives you different wavelengths versus a beam splitter that's that's gray and gives you the same wavelength of each. Oh, that's very good question. So I didn't mention that, but uh, when we use this nonlinear reconstru reconstruction algorithm, is uh, when we have broadband images, we we do need to simulate all these uh, broadband images. So it takes time, more time. So that's why we split into four different wavelengths range. As uh, then we can have uh, the narrow band as much as we can, so that's why we split the range, uh, the wavelengths. Yeah. Yep. Do you uh, is that affect the linear yeah. the construction? If you use different wavelengths for the different points. Uh, if we have the polychromatic calibration source, then I don't think we, it's going to affect for the linear algorithms because we can have uh, broadband response metrics using the polychromatic internal source. So then on sky is going to be the same. Yeah. Can you comment on the science that would be enabled with the new sensor? Because you guys will have better air system than us. Yeah, I should have added sure. that. Art. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure like people like want to use the uh, Gemini Subaru exchange time and would want to use probably Subaru radio system once this is all working on sky. So I would say it's going to be the first uh, like extreme AO system uh, for the many instruments. So especially like exoplanet direct imaging uh, field, we are the only one who has the extreme AO system before the instruments. So uh, also we can use the SCEX AO as the second stage uh, focal plane reference sensing and control system. So we can, even we can have better deeper contrast using the SCEX AO. So I think it's very good uh, for exoplanet direct imaging, like high contrast imaging uh, field. And other than that, uh, the AO3K performance with the, oh, there is a, there is also ultimate project, which is the uh, GLAO project, ground layer project. So uh, once we have the GLAO, then we can, um, we can provide the uh, better 
um, better image quality with the wide field of view. That's the one of the science scientific uh, view. But uh, only for the AO3K system. Um, so the high contrast imaging. Also, we do have new near infrared pyramid of reference sensor, so we can uh, we can see the galactic, for example, the galactic center science, something like that. Because uh, usually the visible reference sensor can assist uh, the visible reference, uh, visible wavelength is fainter than infrared, infrared. So we can see more fainter targets and so on. So yeah, we can have better sense. Um, so the curvature wavefront sensor is optical only, or is it optical only? Oh yeah, the visual the curvature wave sensor is only for the uh visual wavelengths. So yeah, using yeah. So I'm very. <laughs> I have a user perspective voices. <laughs> so it looks like the limiting magnitude will be 14, 15? Yeah. 16. 16? Okay. No, actually the 16th is the current magnitude limit for the AO 180. So I would say once we optimize the performance, it's going to be like 19th. Wow. Okay. I know it's <laughs> too optimal. And I have always hard time to convert strain ratio to the uh, actual scene value. So if you observe at, let's say, 18 magnitude at 0.5 arc second C, then mm. the, what will be the sense type will be? The point uh, yes. <laughs> of course, it's better than diffraction limits. So that's a question for Olivia. How can I convert to <laughs> convert to the it's yeah, it's difficult. Uh roughly 0.3 strel ratio is when you lose the diffraction limit. Okay. So what's 0.3 here? It's right here. Uh -huh. So magnitude, what's the magnitude? 0.3 17. 17. 17. 17. Yeah. 17. <clears throat> Yeah. Can we guide on the yeah. galactic center? The Asian? Yes, guide. We still need to try to work on sensor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not mix that one. <laughs> so, yeah, using the near infrared pyramid web sensor. Yeah. You can observe galactic center. But we could also do LGS. Ways. Yes. Yeah, in fact, we'll consensus for the other modes. Mm -hmm. Maybe depending on the conditions, it's small configurations. Yep. Do we have more questions? Yeah. If not, then we can thank the speaker again. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the time.